Right, well, just been to the local car shop to order up some disc pads for one of the old cars. They're the old Ford Galaxy. They're not desperately needing to be changed, but I just don't like leaving them to to get too low. It's just not worth it. It's supposed to have sensors on it, uh, but uh, I don't really trust sensors on pads because they they're so close to all the horrible wet and grime. I've had problems with them in the past. Mind you, that was on a French car. Never to be repeated. Well, the other thing uh, that we're doing is testing out the, the front brake again. Because the last time I was on this bike, I'd refurbished the front brake calipers which I did but it was still a bit squishy so I have refurbished the master cylinder on the handlebar here and uh, things are really good although it has to be said the later brakes on the uh, higher boosters are far better than this one uh, for one thing this is just too complicated uh, 12 pistons uh, is a bit unnecessary and uh, the Brembo's on the Gen 2 are uh, uh, twin pots and um, and an awful lot better than this one to be honest I mean you can get um, kits to uh, to change the brakes but you're looking at a lot of money I'm just gonna pull in here for a second to uh, to connect up my cable down here that's it done in case you're wondering what it's all about the uh, the jacket I'm wearing is called a hit air and it it's got a, a co2 canister a small one hidden about its person and uh, in in the um, hopefully unlikely event that i fall off this uh, lanyard which has got a uh, a disc warning piece on it uh, will activate the co2 canister and blow the jacket up like a puffer fish and the reason I've got that is because as I'm an older person I don't bounce anymore and hopefully uh, if something nasty should to ha should happen the uh, the co2 will cushion me somewhat particularly around the neck and back so uh, that's what that's for and uh, so that I don't forget that the lanyard is connected to my jacket uh, I've fitted this disc lock reminder and uh, that reminds me that I'm connected uh, of course I forgot to do it outside the shop but never mind I've done it now so uh, the Front calip uh, front calipers were quite tricky to do. Um, as I said, it uh, took a little while to make sure everything was 100%. Uh, uh, 
but it was a piece of cake to do the master cylinder here other than get the screws out the, the two screws were uh, really tight um, I don't think they'd been out for an awful long time and having done the front calipers and uh, bled the brakes and uh, knowing that the fluid was new and everything was okay down there uh, there is a way of doing your handlebar mounted master cylinder without the need to bleed the brakes all you need is a little bit of time uh, and, and not following the book the book will tell you to to drain it out uh, using a bleed nipple but if you just take the top off and uh, just suck the fluid out through a pipe uh, I've got a, a jam jar that's always a third full of old brake fluid which I tend to use on the cars and it's got its own little pipe that I use um, I, sometimes I use a vacuum pump but not always anyway because I've got that little pipe which is already uh, full of brake fluid I just suck the fluid out bit by bit and pop it into the jam jar it's not very much in there incidentally and then the next thing is to take off the banjo union banjo union is here and don't let it drop get a bit of wire and tie it so that the banjo union is above the level that it usually is uh, and that way the fluid will be right up until the open point on the banjo union so uh, then you take off the master cylinder and drain what little left there is take out the dust seal which can be a bit tricky if it's been there for a while usually they come out in bits and then you need a really good fine pair of circuit pliers if you've got a really good nice sharp pair of circuit pliers you can get the little circuit out uh, circle it out with any without any problems um, thankfully I've got a really nice pair and um, as I say the circuit just popped out piston came out and with plenty of grease it took no time at all to change the piston rubber as I say you need plenty of uh, rubber grease and it's a piece of cake I mean there's just a couple of uh, couple of rubbers and a dust seal to do uh, it, it was very clean but I, I did blow it out with an airline uh, make sure everything was clean but compared to the calipers it's dead easy so you put it all together again use your circlet pliers to pop the circlet back in put the dust seal on pop it back on the handlebars then carefully put the banjo union back on without losing any more fluid which, which isn't difficult and then fill up the reservoir and then if you operate the brake lever very very tentatively for a few minutes you'll find that there are bubbles coming out of both holes um, usually there's a smaller hole that lets the fluid in to keep the system topped and then there's a slightly larger hole that's normally got a steel baffle on it that uh, releases the pressure uh, the little baffle on it stops if, if you have the top off and you operate the brakes a few times uh, the 
pressure release can cause the fluid to spill all over the bloody place. So the little baffle uh, deflects it, the, um, the fluid flow. Uh, anyway, it's got a baffle on this one. So having operated the lever for a minute or two, uh, you'll see the bubbles coming out of both of the uh, small holes. But the good thing is that you're, all, you're only filling up the cylinder and the section of Banjo Union, not the rest of the system. So what I do is then leave the whole thing for about 15 minutes and repeat. And slowly but surely the cylinder and the Banjo Union fills up and the bubbles lessen and uh, I think I did it about three times with about ten minutes between and uh, sure enough after a while no more bubbles and you don't have to bleed the system and that is what I did because uh, time wasn't of, of the essence and I knew the fluid was uh, brand new and um, the job was done and it, it really is a straightforward job compared to uh, doing the calipers and it's, uh, it's feeling okay uh, I did adjust the chain I think I mentioned that I needed to adjust the chain because it was snatching but I just have a slight feeling through my rump that it might need to be slackened off slightly. I can just detect a sort of tight, tight section. There shouldn't be much wear on these, uh, on the chain or the sprockets because it's only done, uh, what's it done? Let's have a look. 15,900 miles. So, uh, strictly speaking, it should all be okay and I can confirm that I did the checks on the way to the bike shop and the brake is really good though I still think uh, the Gen 2 Brembo's are far superior uh, when the Gen Generation 2 bike came along they they use the same firm, Tokiko, uh, but they got rid of the three-pot piston uh, system and uh, and just had a double one. And then uh, some years later, they went over to a Brembo twin-pot system. And uh, has to be said, they are infinitely better than these. Uh, in actual fact, uh, I, I had uh, a Nissin front end on my uh, VTR uh, a Firestorm, which was the same as fitted to the 919 uh, Fireblade, and those brakes were absolutely brilliant, uh, even for a 1980s bike the braking was better than this and I never needed to do anything to them really other than change the fluid and I only did that in the reservoir uh, I just sucked the old stuff out and put some new in and let it circulate I have to say that 